All right. Welcome to the week two of Flutterverse. I am Alia. I'm a core team member here at DSEGHRC and I'm going to be the trainer for you this week. This week we're going to make this project which is the business card app. You can call it a mini portfolio website if you want and hopefully it's going to be full of learnings for you. All right, let's get started. We start by creating a new Flutter project which is going to be an application. Yeah, this is where I want to create it and I'll call it the business card app. We will now wait for Flutter to create it for us. Alright, this is done. Now you can see that we have a default counter app ready with us. Let's try and run it. Let's start our emulator. And now let's say Flutter run. Alright, so now we have the default Flutter app, which is the counter app, remember? Alright, now first thing that we're going to do is we are going to get rid of all of these comments. Actually, you know what, I'm going to delete the home page because we don't need this code. We will write everything from scratch. Let's get rid of it. And Let's get rid of this too. All right. We are going to start by creating a new stateless widget. Remember, we are using a stateless widget because we don't really want our UI to update. So this is what we are going to build. So there isn't really anything that's going to change its state or, or some UI component that's going to change uh, with time. No, everything is constant here. Everything is stateless. So we are going to use a stateless widget here All right, let's let's call it Let's call it home page for now Okay Let's give it a home page all right, let's add a const keyword because remember this is a constant. All right, let's try and run this and see what happens. Okay, now we've got a blank screen. It's because there's nothing inside the home page. It's, it's just a container and there's nothing inside this container. So all we see is a blank screen. Let's get off this get rid of this debug banner, shall we? So there's this property called debug show check mode banner. I'll set it to false. All right, cool. Now let's look at the design. So, all right, as soon as I look at this design, the first thing that I think I'm going to do is add this gradient in the background. Okay, so in order to get this correct color shades, I am going to get it from here. Okay, so let's go into the container and inside of the container, you can see it has a decoration property. It also has a color property, but when you're giving a decoration property and you give the color property both of them, you get an error. Let's let's try and see that. Let's say color. And let's 
let's paste the color we just copied. Okay. Let's try and run it. Okay, now we've got this nice color. Now, what I'm going to do is add the decoration property. I'm going to say box decoration. And inside of the decoration, if you can see actually, we've got another color property here. Let's try giving this a color property. This time, let's give it a different color. Okay. I'm going to take this one and I'm going to paste it here. Let's take a hash. Let's save this and let's run it. Ooh, what happened? So it says that failed assertion color is equal to equal to null or decoration equal to equal to null. Cannot provide both a color and a decoration. So the problem here is that when I am giving this container a decoration, I cannot give it a color outside of it. Okay, it can only have one of these. So when I'm using a box decoration, I should specify the color inside of the box decoration and not not inside directly the container. Okay, so let's let's actually remove this line. Anyways, we do not need need this color. Okay, because what we want is not just a solid color, but instead we want a linear gradient. So that's what we're going to do. Okay, let's okay. Let's hover over box decoration and see what property we need. Color, we've already seen that. We don't need the color. Image, not really. Border, no. Border radius, box shadow, gradient. Okay, so gradient is what we're looking for. I'll say gradient. You can hover over it to see. It accepts a gradient. Um, here, we need a linear gradient. So I'm going to say linear gradient. And these are all the properties that linear gradient has. So I'll, I'll specify the colors first. And this is going to be a list of colors. As you can see, it's, it's going to be a list of colors. Okay. So let's give it the list of colors. 0xff. Let's get the colors from the design file. Let's take the hash off and let's add second color. Let's get it from the design file. Same thing again, 0xff. All right, let's save it and let's run it and see. Okay, now we've got this cool back, uh, background gradient but there's still a problem this doesn't really look like the design file right see we need a vertical gradient but what we've got here is a horizontal gradient from left to right we don't need this so what do we do let's see what properties we can change okay so le linear gradient and linear gradient what we can do is we can change the begin and end. Both of these are alignments of, of where the linear gradient sh should start and where it should end. So what we're going to do is after the color property, I'm going to say begin. This is going to take an alignment, okay? Alignment dot. Now I want it to start from here, top center, and therefore I'm going to say top center and end. We want it to end alignment dot at the bottom center. Okay, let's save it and hit refresh. All right, this is exactly what we wanted, right? This is the gradient we were looking for. And all these blue lines, let's get rid of them, add a const before the back box decoration. All right, now we've got this nice gradient, just like the design file. Now, what do we do next? Let's start adding these these elements. Okay, so the first thing after we've got the gradient is to decide how we are going to um, get this desired layout in our app. Okay, so as you can see in the design file, all of these elements are just placed one below each other. So 
in such a case what we're going to use is a column widget so when you want to place widgets one below the other you're going to use the column widget and when you want to place them let's say one beside each other you're going to use a row widget simple as that so so let's add a column widget so after the box decoration i'm going to give this container a child which is going to be a column widget and now now a column widget it has it doesn't have just one child okay it's going to have multiple widgets inside of it so it's going to have a children property to it okay so the first child inside of this column is going to be a circle avatar widget circle avatar so, so basically in order to achieve this profile picture there are many different ways in which you can do this but according to me circle avatar is going to be the e easiest for you so that's that's why that is basically why we're going to use this and let's see so the size of this circle is 140 by 140 which is the diameter but we, what we want is the radius okay because when you hover over this you find that it has a radius property okay so so we will have to specify the radius of this so 140 by 2 is 70 that's one way to say 70 let's save it run it see what it looks like okay now what i want is i don't want a solid color here instead i want an image i want my image to show up here okay so let's see how we, we can do that here if you hover over circle avatar you'll see that it has a background image property this is exactly what we're going to use okay but before we use the background image how do we actually tell our app which image to use okay so for that i'm going to create a folder in the in the root directory of this app which is going to be called the assets folder and inside of the assets folder I'm going to create another folder which is going to be called images okay now I'll right click on images and I'll re reveal it in file explorer reveal it in finder if you're on a Mac okay now now what I'm going to do is I'm going to copy this picture of mine and I'm going to paste it inside the images folder okay now let's get back to the code let's go to the pubspec.yaml file because whenever whenever you wish to use um, an asset or an asset font or you want to add some new dependency pubspec.yaml is where you want to go Let's remove all of these comments. Mm, I don't need this. Okay, so this is the part that we want. So in order to add assets to your application, add an asset section like this. So instead of typing all of this from scratch, what I'm going to do instead is I'm just going to uncomment this part and I'll specify our path. Okay, so it is assets slash the images folder, so images slash. Now, now there are two ways we can do this. Either we can say, Assets slash images slash alia.jpg or instead what we can do is leave it here which means at assets slash images slash so this slash would mean that everything inside of this images folder basically so i don't have to add each asset line by line i, I can just say images slash which means everything inside of it okay let's hit save We'll wait for PubKit to run, and after that's done, we are going to use it here. 
So let's say the background image D. Now this is going to accept an image provider. So I'm going to say in a set image, set image, I am going to specify the path which is a set slash images slash JPEG. Okay, let's hit save. And this time I'm not going to just reload it. I'm going to hot restart it because we've just added a new asset. We should restart it. All right, we've got this image here. In case, in case it doesn't load for you, um, what you can do instead is you can, you can cold restart your app instead of just hot restart. So basically you'll press Q and you, you'll run uh, you you will say flutter run once again okay all right so now we've got the profile thing sorted what's the next thing next thing i can see here is this text which says alia ali so basically it's going to say your name but okay let's let's add the text first i'm going to say text and here I'll have to specify what text to display. I -I style. Okay, so let's just run this much first. Okay, so now we've got this ugly looking font here, which is because we did not wrap our container with a scaffold widget. So remember here here the home takes the home page and this is not returning a scaffold it's returning a container so let's wrap it with a scaffold widget first let's wrap it with a widget scaffold okay and scaffold this won't take a child it's going to say body let's hot reload okay what do we see the text has now changed and few other things have changed in our app okay we will fix one thing one thing at a time so what do we do first let's style our text to make it look like this okay so what is the font style here it is Montserrat semi bold and 30 pixels so let's get the font okay there are two ways of doing this either you can you can download the font as an asset or you can directly use google fonts so i'll show you how to do it um, as a set fonts okay let's go to fonts.google.com and here i am going to search montserrat montserrat okay so now i am going to download this entire family Now, now that this is downloaded, I am going to, okay, so inside of the assets folder, remember not the images folder, the assets folder, I'm going to create another folder, which is going to be called the fonts, okay, and same thing again, reveal and file explorer, now this is what we just downloaded, this is the zip file, I am going to Copy this Montserrat semi .ttf file, copy, and I'm going to paste it inside the fonts folder. Okay. All right. Now let's go back to the pubspec.yaml file. This part, we don't need this part. Okay. Uh, yeah, so this is the part where we add the fonts. We will uncomment the first four lines okay we will call it Montserrat semi bold and let's specify the path here assets slash fonts slash Montserrat semi bold dot ddf remember this this part of it should match exactly with the name of this file okay it has to match letter to letter okay otherwise it won't work 
okay let's run pubget now that this is done what we can do is we can we can specify the style of this text okay this is going to accept a text style widget so let's do it style a text style widget and all of these these are all the properties that we can modify so what i'm going to do first is the font family remember we named it montserrat semi bold that's what i'm going to say and what's the next thing we do the size is 30 pixels okay and it uh, and the color is going to be white currently if you see it's, it's got a black color by default so we're going to change that so let's say color to a colors dot white and i'm going to say font size okay font size to a 30 pixels let's save reload okay now it looks a lot lot more like the design but there's still a problem what is it if you look closely you'll you'll notice that there's a space between this image and this text so there can be multiple ways of doing this again but in our case we're going to use a sized box okay so after the circle alpha what i'm going to say is a sized box and if i just leave it at this and run it you will see you'll see nothing really changes okay so if you want to give a, a, a blank space you can use size box for it and specify the height or width of it so here we want 34 pixels of vertical space so what i'm going to do is inside of the size box i'm going to say height 34 okay okay now we've got this empty space between these two and what's the next thing so the next thing here is the text that says flutter developer it's again Montserrat Semibo 15 pixels but this time it has also got some letter spacing okay which is 1.5 how do we achieve that okay let's see let's add another text widget this time it's going to say flutter developer give it a style property it's going to be a text style font family monster semi bold Font size was 15 pixels. Color, let's say colors dot. Uh, you can actually select your color from here. I think I think white 54 looks close enough. White 54. Okay, and what's the last thing? It is letter spacing. Let's set it to 1.5. Let's see what happens. Okay. Let's see if look if it looks close enough to the design. I think it does. Okay, so we'll leave it at this. There's there's another another small space you can add it if you want or or another thing that you can do is you can set the height property of this text. Okay. So let's say height let's see at 10 pixel height and see what happens you see what happened we don't want a 10 pixel height so let's say 2 that looks fine okay okay so what's the next thing that we want is this horizontal line okay how do you do that so the easiest way of doing this is by using something called as the divider widget. Divider. 
Okay. Let's save it and see. I don't know if you can see it, but there's a horizontal line here. Okay. Let's let's style it a little bit. Let's see what what it has to offer. It's got a thickness property. It has a height. It has a color. Let's change the color and thickness first. Thickness. Let's set it to two. And the color to a colors dot white. Okay, now it's pretty visible. Now, what I want is, I don't want this divider to take up the whole space. Is I want it to have a width of 100 pixels. Okay, so either what I can do is, either I can, I can adjust the indent and end indent, but that's going to be a little, a little time taking because you'll have to adjust the, uh, adjust the values according to different screen sizes what i'm going to do instead is I, I am going to wrap it with a size box and i'm give it going to give it a width property of 100 pixels let's add a cost here okay this is exactly what we want and now now we have more spaces here. Okay, what do we do? Simple, we add more size boxes. So after this text, I'm going to add another size box. Size box, and I'm going to give this a height property of, of let's say 20 pixels. And let's give it a comma. Okay. Does it look like a design file? Hmm, it does. And after this, after this divider, how much space have we got? We've got 34 pixels of space. But let's not add a size box for now. Okay, we will adjust that later. Okay, one more thing that I might want to fix here is that in our version of the app all of these all of these widgets are sticking to the top okay but we don't want them to stick so what i am going to do instead is i am going to center them okay how do i do that so one way of doing this is i will go to the column widget and i am going to that i am going to its cross axis alignment so for a column the cross axis alignment is going to be is going to be horizontal and its main axis alignment is going to be the vertical alignment and similarly for a for a row widget the main axis alignment is going to be horizontal and the cross axis alignment is going to be the vertical alignment okay so so for a for a column i don't want the cross axis alignment for now i want the main axis alignment i'll set it to main axis alignment dot center and reload it okay now it looks better but it's still not perfect. That's fine for now. We will add other elements, all of these tiles that you see here. We will add them in, in the next part. Okay. For now, I'll leave it at this. Okay. Thank you.